Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that has really emerged on the scene, which is AI and personal statements. I am asked all the time about AI and uh, essays as a professor and statements, short answer questions, interview question answers as an admissions committee member and in my role here as advancement coach and strategist at Apply Yourself. And I have a lot to say. That'll be no surprise to you. And just like everything else, you know, there is some controversy because a lot of people are A, looking for the easy way, B, think that by using AI, they're going to get something produced that is better than something that they could produce on their own, which is absolutely not true. And that admissions committees don't know any better and that admissions committees can't tell when it's AI versus when it's you. And so what I want to do is talk about this today. Now, I'm not going to name any AI programs, but if you're on this podcast and you're a student or a young professional or a seasoned professional, then you know what I'm talking about, especially if you've read any sort of article or news in the last year or so on on the topic. And so what I want to do is really unpack my thoughts on AI when it comes to writing, specifically personal statements. I'm not going to talk about essay writing as a professor here. I'm going to focus specifically on personal statements and short answer questions. Now, here's the thing. There's some controversy around whether or not personal statements will be removed from application requirements. And this is interesting to me because there's also controversy around standardized tests and whether standardized tests will be removed from some application requirements, specifically law school. This has been a huge conversation in the States in the last, you know, six or so months. So, you know, as an admissions committee member, I can tell you that we need as much information about an applicant as we can get. And we need to get to know applicants really well in order to know not only if they're suitable for the program, if they'll succeed in the program, if they'll thrive in the program, and if they will be supportive to other members in the program, but also to understand what their goals are, where they want to be in their lives, what, how they want to serve their community, whatever that looks like. And so I think that the controversies or the calls around, you know, different parts of the application that may or may not be around in, you know, what, however many years is, is funny because we can't strip the application down from everything. We can't strip away what makes people human and we can't strip away the various parts of the application so that there's no, so that there's nothing left. So I just, I, I want to sort of just quell the, the discussion around, oh, well, personal statements might not be a requirement. Okay. Well, also, you know, if we don't have things, the other components of the application standardized test board, and you also don't have a personal statement, what is, what, what is left? So I just wanted to begin by addressing that sort of bit of controversy around, will there be, you know, a, a stopping of all personal statements? Will there be a stopping of the, you know, standardized tests? The answer is that we can't strip away really important parts of the application, like the personal statement. There are some schools that don't require a personal statement. And then I've actually worked with clients on on the rest of their applications, not only for the schools that did require personal statements, but also the ones that didn't. And they have said that after going through the process of writing their applications and waiting to hear back from the schools that they actually aren't sure that they want to go to a school that doesn't require a personal statement or short answer questions. And I I love that because it is so important that we're humans 
and that the admissions committee can relate to us as humans. And one of the things that one of our community members said in one of our sessions was that what kind of people are being admitted to the school when everything is only based on numbers? And what does that say about what the program itself values and, and what your experience will be like in that program? And so I think absolutely that you can be an advocate for yourself in terms of what kind of program you want to be in, how you want that program to value you and your experience, and what you think about the value that the school places on the actual human beings who are in that program. And so I, I just wanted to sort of provide that sort of preamble before we get started on our, on our discussion about AI and personal statements. So the first thing that I'll say about AI and personal statements is that I've seen personal statements that are produced by artificial intelligence programs, apps, and they tend to sound quite surface level and very robotic. What I mean by that is that while the sentence structure tends to be good, while the grammar tends to be good, that's not all that matters. It certainly does matter in applications. We work very hard in our community on writing skills, including sentence structure, spelling, grammar, and structure of the statements, what's required in each section. Even if your school doesn't make clear what's required in each section, there is certainly something that they are looking for in each section that I will tell you about and help you with. But in addition to the structure of the sentences and the correct grammar, the schools and the admissions committee specifically want to know about you. And artificial intelligence doesn't have that information about you. You know, if you've ever tried these programs and, and I've looked into them because my, <laughs> some of my students have used them in their essays and they've been caught. And this happens across programs, across universities, and they end up in academic integrity hearings, sometimes with plagiarism charges. And I've been at those hearings and they are not fun. But anyway, I've played around with some of these apps just to sort of see how they work. And, you know, you input the prompt and it spits something out in five seconds. And I've also read articles, you know, about what people think of this, what admissions committees think of this, what, you know, academics think of this. And by and large, the, the consensus tends to be that they produce something, but it's not personal. And that is what the schools are looking for. Your schools are looking for something personal. They're looking for something that draws on your experience. There's no way that an artificial intelligence app can produce anything that speaks to your CV, that speaks to your resume, that speaks to components in your autobiographical sketch, that speaks to your actual experience in your volunteer programs, in your professional job experience, in your research experience, in whatever else it is, in your academic experience, in your personal experience, because sometimes applications ask for a personal example rather than a professional example. And there's no way that AI can produce that sort of content for you. And that is like, that is the most compelling part of any application. That is the most substantive. That is the most genuine, the most authentic, the most, if you could see me, I'm like grasping the air. Like it, it is the most tangible part of your application. The part that people can relate to, the part that makes you a human being, the part that, that, that admissions committee members can say, yeah, you know, I may or may not have experienced the same thing, but I get how they feel. Whether it's passion, whether it's because you faced a challenge, whether it's because you had to, you know, try something again, whether it's because you had to revisit a skill and develop it. People on admissions committees are people and they can relate to you. And so you have to let them, you have to let them. And if you decide, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, let this AI program spit out what I'm going to submit, it's not going to get you anywhere. It's not personal. It's robotic. It's, it's, it may look polished from the outside. It may have good grammar. It may have good spelling. It may have good sentence structure, but there's nothing about you. There's nothing about you in it. And I've seen some of these programs and they spit out some story that you can, you know, try to relate to. They sometimes they try to provide an example, but then the example is nowhere substantively on your CV or resume. And when it comes to your verifiers, where it comes to interviews, they're going to ask you about your experience. And so if you provide something that an AI app spat out for you, it's not going to actually speak to any of your experience. And so if you're asked about it, 
they're going to, firstly, if there's a mismatch between your written materials, your personal statement, your short answer question, and your autobiographical sketch, that's probably going to lead to a rejection of your application because there's inconsistency and it it looks like inconsistency very clearly. And so when you are deciding, should I be using AI to complete my personal statements or should I not? Keep this in mind that we really look as admissions committee members, we really look at your application holistically. We look at your experience very closely, very closely, because we advocate for you on the admissions committees. I've talked about my experience on admissions committees before and my ongoing experience. I've talked, and I also talked about it last episode where we talked about the chat forums. And there are so many cases in which admissions committee members are actually fighting for you. Like they are actually fighting for you. They are picking apart, well, this person did this and this person did that. And so many applications are so great that it really comes down to the fine details. And so if there's a mismatch, if something feels inauthentic, it's just not going to make it into the, into even the maybe pile. It might just be straight up rejected. And, and I've seen that happen and I've rejected applications in my reviews for those reasons as well. And so authenticity and, and professionalism and truth and honesty and consistency are really important. That cannot be understated. And the other thing, by the way, is that if you're inputting a prompt, remember there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are applying two similar programs or the same programs at the same schools. And if you're inputting a prompt and they're inputting that same prompt, you could have the same answer spit out. And let me tell you, if two answers are the same on any application materials, it's in the garbage, like without question, without question. And there may even be a flag by that name for a pre for a subsequent year. If you are reapplying to a program, because that's obvious plagiarism. So The point here is stay away from AI when it comes to your personal statements. And when it comes to really anything that is serving you and your advancement, AI is definitely not the place for you for those materials. There is a time and a place for AI, like absolutely, but it's not here. So that's number one. Number two is that AI doesn't know what admissions committees are looking for. That's the truth. AI has no idea what admissions committees are looking for. And why that's significant is because there is a required flow. There is required substance in each paragraph of your personal statement or your short answer question. And there are specific things that your admissions committees are looking for. It's not just the keywords. It's not just the buzzwords. It's it's your experience. It's how you've framed it. It's how you are showcasing yourself. It's how you talk about the significance of your experience, your growth. It's not just about buzzwords. I am telling you that when I'm on admissions committees, we are reading every single word. We are not skimming through your personal statement in five seconds. We are taking time. These things take time and they take discussion. And there's more than one person who's reviewing each application. It's an odd number of people, typically three or five, who are reviewing each application. And admissions committee members, there are typically, you know, anywhere from five to, I've been on committees where there are up to 13 or 15 members of, of the admissions committee who are reviewing applications. It, it is, it does tend to be an, an, an odd number so that there's always a tiebreaker. But the point that I'm trying to make is that we take time. We take time to read your materials and to actually put ourselves in your shoes as we're reading your materials. And so give us something to read, like give us what we're looking for, give us the content, give us your experience, give us your authenticity, give us your genuine, your genuine experience, your, your uniqueness, show us who you are. And AI is not going to do that. As I said, there is a required flow. There is a required content that may not, and certainly in many cases or most cases is definitely not stated in the application requirements online. We leave that very open for interpretation, but there is, there's no way around it. There is content that we are looking for in your applications at the graduate and professional school levels. And if it's not there, then we can't advocate for your application. It's that simple. So 
AI is not going to give you the required flow. AI is not going to give you that required information that we need. It's not going to produce that for you. So that is important also. Now, the third point and the final point that I'll talk about today is integrity. So the previous two points were more, more, I would say, tangible points. The other, the last is more of a sort of soft point, but I think it's really, really important. And that is, what kind of person are you? And I want you to think about this and decide for yourself, what kind of person are you? And I don't mean that to sound harsh. I don't mean that to sound judgmental. What I do mean by it is, and what I do intend to evoke as part of asking this question is thoughts about your integrity, thoughts about the work that you're providing. How, how do you produce work? How are you presenting yourself to the world? How are you advocating for yourself? And this doesn't just stop, by the way, at the use of AI or not. This actually factors into every single decision that you make, every single choice that you make. We talked last week in the podcast about the kind of people who are writing on chat forums and lying on chat forums just to make themselves feel better or less insecure or to evoke insecurity in other people. But I, you know, in these really intense and competitive processes, what I want to remind you is that you don't have to give in to that. You don't have to give in to that pressure. You don't have to give in to the competition. You don't have to give in to that horrible behavior. And you certainly don't have to be a part of it. Having said that, yes, we know that application processes are competitive There's because there's a finite number of spots. But what kind of people are we as we move through those competitive processes? That is the really important point here. And I know that every single person who is in the Apply Yourself community is somebody who is genuine, who is authentic, who doesn't want to hurt other people intentionally or unintentionally, who is here because we have integrity, because we want the work to be our own, because we value that the hard work, because we value support, because we value learning and strategy and the puzzle pieces and putting them together in a way that we are proud of in our applications. And it is so important that you ask yourself this question, regardless of of whether you're part of this community, you become part of this community, or you don't, what kind of person are you? Are you somebody who produces work that you're proud of? Are you somebody who produces very quickly that you, that, you know, you know, you probably could have spent more time or effort on? Are you somebody who uses AI to submit your, your, your assignments, your applications? Are you somebody who uses those, those tools arguably improperly in order so that you don't have to do that hard work? And so I think that this is actually a really important question because we want to be proud of the way that we do our work. We want to be proud of the work that we're producing. We want to be proud of and be able to sleep at night with the choices that we've made. And I know that you can do that. And the question that I have, as I've said, is where is your integrity? Where does it lie? And can you sleep at night with the choices that you're making? And are you satisfied with advancement, you know, where you may have relied on something like AI to produce a quick and easy result where you actually didn't have to think through a whole lot? Having said that, not a whole lot of advancement is going to come that way. Like I said, there is a time and a place for AI, but it is not here. It is not in how we represent ourselves in applications or academically. But how do we think about ourselves? What kind of people are we? And how does that shine through in our materials? Are you giving the committee something of integrity to advocate for? Because that's what we're looking for on the committees. We're looking for something with integrity, authenticity, genuine individuality and experience. And again, it doesn't have to be, you know, any level of experience. It's you talking about the significance of your experience, your growth, what kind of growth you experienced in a really strategic way. And so I leave you with, with those three points about AI and personal statements and I would love to hear from you, to hear about your experience, if you have ex- had experience with any AI, to hear how that's gone for you, or if you feel stuck 
on your applications and you're just not sure about how to proceed and perhaps you're thinking of turning to AI for help, reach out to me first. <laughs> have, have a complimentary call with me, 30 minutes, no strings attached. And the link is in the show notes for my calendar. Just book a call with me just to chat. And if you have other questions about AI or your personal statements or your short answer questions or anything else, just reach out, send me an email, adrian at applyyourselfglobal.com. That's also in the show notes. So thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I hope that you found this valuable, thought provoking and, and helped you to ask some questions of yourself that maybe you hadn't considered before, maybe you had, but were able to revisit. So thank you. And we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.